Well, hello everybody, Matje here, back again with another micro plugin development tutorial series. Today is a little bit of a different video because we're not going to be using just Bucket, we're going to be using Foundation, which is a framework that I've made back in 2017 and it kept improving in sense to make commands. And we're going to be making a special command to spawn a custom boss. For example, I can spawn this one, whatever that one is, and then I can simply check if the entity is a boss, this one isn't, and that one is. I'm going to be covering tab completion, I'm going to be covering advanced arguments and parameters, and I'm going to be covering how to save so much time if you decide to go with foundation. So without any further ado, please go ahead and click the link in the video description to see the foundation installation because otherwise it's not going to work. You need to have foundation installed. It's very simple. Before we proceed with it, I just want to mention, please make sure to extend simple plugin instead of Java plugin when it comes to installing foundation, as well as use on plugin start instead of on enable and on plugin stop instead of on disable. That's it that I'm going to say. Let's crack into the video. So in my previous videos, when I showed you how to make commands, you see that we have these elaborate conditions, right? If sender is not a player, send him a message and then you have to return false. And I clicked something that I have no freaking clue what is. And the problem is that it's so repetitive and it's crazy long, especially here. You see, we have a try and a catch block. So just getting an entity type takes you almost 10 lines, which is pretty insane. What have I shown you that this entire thing can be combined into one line? This is exactly what the foundation command system will do for you. So what I'm going to do, I already made a fo.command package, or maybe I can just rename this to command.foundation to be consistent with the GUI. And then I'm going to make a new file, say boss command, and all you're going to do is extend simple command just like this and make this class final. Now there's two methods you need to override. First one being the on command method, which works just the same way as the on command from bucket. However, to get the sender, to get the arguments, all you're gonna do is call sender and arcs like this because these are already available for you. Second thing we need to do is override the command, uh, the actual constructor, change this to public. And then the label right here is going to be boss. And you can even use the slash to type in Elias. So this command is going to work if I type in boss or if I type in slash B like this one. There is also a way to automatically register this command using something called auto register annotation. However, this is not strictly necessary because all we have to do, we have to go inside the main plugin method or if you want to enable a reloading support, there is an on reloadable start method. And here you can go to your settings. Uh, settings is boss command enabled. For example, if you want to have conditional commands reg registration and let players disable commands in the settings, then you can simply register uh, the new boss command this way. However, I'm not going to be using this. I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to be using the auto register annotation. Please make sure do not type anything in your plugin.yml because foundation does that for you. So once again, foundation saves you all of that junk right here, because this is now managed inside the actual class. And if you want to, you can just type in this set usage. We're going to be using the spawn or info commands right here. You can set the description, manage custom bosses. For example, you can even send uh, a set of permission. If you type in no, Everybody can use the command. If you type anything custom, then obviously people need to have the custom permission. If you don't type anything, foundation will automatically create the permission based on the syntax, your plugin name, dot command, dot the main label, which is boss. So this is going to be by default if you do not type anything. Also note that if you need to change or if you wanna change an existing command into foundation, let's just go with the cow command, all you're gonna do is delete the implements, change this to extends, simple command, use the auto register, then delete the stuff from plugin YML, delete the stuff inside right here. And then this is now a void, it's not a Boolean, so return true is just return. And everything should be compatible 
with buckets. So migrating to foundation has never been easier. That's literally it. And then you also also have to implement the constructor. It's very, very, very simple. Now, remember in the cow command, we have to type in this, right? So if sender is not a command return. Okay, in foundation, you can get rid of this one. You can just type in this check console and we will automatically uh, make sure that this is a player. If not, we're going to return the command using a sneaky hack, which means that I simply throw an exemption. And then if you're going to use the no console message, which is this one, I'm going to make a video on how to configure the foundation localization system so that you can change these messages easily. All right, so use this one. And then there is a lot of check methods. So instead of using the check arguments right here, args length, all you have to do is type in check arcs. Minimum length is going to be, for example, one. And here we can just type in usage like this one. However, foundation is even smarter because you can have that at this level and you can set the minimum arguments to one like this one. And now you can get rid of that one. First, let me get the first argument. First things first like this to lowercase and then if the parameters equals to spawn what do we have to do we need to get the entity type that we want to spawn now as you can see previously we had to do all that crap right we had to literally go through all this hell to simply get an entity type that does, does not make any sense so foundation comes with a lot of methods uh, starting with find they'll simply make it very easy for you to find stuff so you can find uh, the time you can pass in the time from the argument world number offline player or online player and number material boolean however we are interested in the more advanced method called enum so find enum entity type like this then the value is going to be the arcs one or arcs zero the first argument and then we can simply specify invalid entity type like this and instead of typing in uh, this like that you can just use the variable and you can even use the available uh, variable inside the message to print out all available entities which is pretty cool now we can get rid of this and then what we can do we can just spawn this so we can get the player using foundations get player method we can get his world and then we can simply spawn entity at the player's location perfect and then what we can do we can put in invisible uh, metadata so I do have a video on invisible metadata. However, that one uses just bucket and it requires Minecraft at least 1.14. Guess what? Foundation has a full backwards comp compatibility patch for Minecraft down to 1.7.10, which means if you call comp metadata set metadata spawn, you can simply type in, I don't know, custom boss right here and set the value to anything and it's going to work on all Minecraft versions, which is pretty dang cool. Now, what we can do, we also have a bunch of tell methods, which again, I'm gonna show you in the future video on how to customize the prefix. So you can simply tell um, success, spawn a custom boss of type like this one. However, the problem with the type is that it's gonna look like this, uh, with her skeleton, for example. And I do not like that format. I just wanna type in with her skeleton. How do you change the entity type this into that? Guess what? As you guessed it, Foundation has an item util class for your special needs. It says Bountify capitalized. All you're going to do is type in type there and it will do that automatically. Great. Now, if I type in info, what happens here? I want to get the entity looked at that I'm looking. So get the player, get entity, get the target entity at the five blocks. And then if the entity is null, that means I'm not looking at anything. So we need to check not null looked at you must be looking at an entity to get its info that's right and then what we can do we can simply uh, print out is boss by calling comp metadata has metadata looked at custom boss and then we can simply tell info this entity is a custom boss yes or no depending on the boolean however what happens if i type something else that's right i can just return uh, invalid arcs and foundation takes care of the rest there are a bunch of other methods how to deal with these sub commands i do recommend you have a look at the region command inside foundation which is a regional command which uh, is 
by default disabled or hidden, but I'm going to have a video on how to use that later on, which helps you make your region plugin so much quickly, so much more quickly. And we actually created an enum called param down here, which deals with all of these uh, parameters right here. So check that out in the source code to be inspired. And there's also something called a simple command group, which is something more advanced. And I'm going to be covering uh, this in the next video. But for now, I think this is more than enough. Now let's move on to the tab completion. So tab completion without foundation is hell. If you just have a look at, for example, butterfly command or economy command, look at this junk. We have to go to stream filter if it starts with it and then collect it back, which is just ridiculous. Foundation has way easier way to do tab completion. So all we have to do is we can check if arcs length is one and we can simply return uh, complete last words, which is spawn and info. That's it. Everything else is done under the hood. Also, what we can do, we can simply check if there is at least, there are exactly two arguments, and then we can get the parameter, just as we did in the above code. And then if it's a spawn, we can simply complete last verts, complete last vert, just like that. And we can pass in the whole entity type in class, or even better, all the values from that class and foundation is going to do the rest. Now, if you want to prevent uh, the other tab completion, you can just type in no complete right here. That means if I type anything else and I want to tap completed, nothing will happen. Awesome guys. Now back in the game, let's test it out. I can type in boss and I can type in B and you can, as you can see, foundation even automatically creates the description and the usage. And then notice I can type in info, must be looking in entity, or I can type in spawn and even the tab completion works just fine. And I can go with the wither skeleton. And that does not work because I type in arcs zero, which was supposed to be arcs one, right? When I type in slash boss spawn entity type, then the spawn is zero argument. And the first one is actually entity type. That's how it works always forgot that. So let's go with the wither skeleton. Now it says wither skeleton properly capitalized. And we have a beautiful boss right here. If I go and I hit info, it says that we are looking at a boss. If I spawn it from spawner, spawner egg, which doesn't have the custom tag, it'll say we are not having a boss right here. And if I look at something else, it says you are not looking at it. Awesome guys, everything works. Last part as a bonus, if I get myself rid of my operator, operator status, boss, no tab completion and no permission. Okay. Foundation even does permission set up for you automatically. So very easy, very easy to use. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I have a full course on programming Minecraft plugins, including a full mini games week, including live coaching support twice per week with professional Java instructors. The course requires no previous Java coding skills, and it's going to help you make even more advanced plugins. Go check the link in the video description and I am out.